Okay, so today we're talking about ternary ionic compounds. Just going to do this again because I just messed up the last recording. Uh, and ternary versus binary. Binary is two, ternary is three or more. Okay, three or more what? Three or more elements in the compound. So we took a look at this one, barium, sulfur, and oxygen. We took a look at this one, lithium, hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen. So these ones are involving polyatomic ions. It's really simple on how to name them, actually terribly simple. They're still ionic, so we don't have to get real fancy. I'm going to show you molecular compounds, which we have to name them just a bit differently. That's coming in the next lesson. But ternary ionic, no problem. So this one right here is an example of a ternary ionic. Calcium nitrite. Okay. So what you need to do is you need to figure out what is calcium, and that ion is calcium, and what's the charge on calcium there? 2 plus. Now, you all have periodic tables that has the ions on it, but if you were just looking at a regular periodic table that didn't have the ions on it, it's in the second row from the left. So all of those, sorry, second column. All of those in the second column, those are the alkaline earth metals, and they all have 2 plus charges. The very first column, alkali metals, plus 1. All right? Okay, nitrite. Now, here's our polyatomic ion, nitrite. So what is nitrite? It's N-O, who remembers? Uh, yes, it's minus, but how many oxygens do we have in this one? Two. And what's the charge of minus what? Minus one or two? It's on the back of your paper there. It should be one. You see it? Look it up. There's nitrite, there's nitrate. They're both negative one. Okay. All right, so in this case, we need to write the formula, and I have a 2 plus charge here and a 1 minus. So what does that mean? I need what? I need two of the nitrites. That's exactly right. Now, when you're writing the formula with a polyatomic ion, okay, so you write calcium, and then we'll write nitrite, and I need two of these whole things right here. So what you do, yeah, this is when you have to use brackets in the formula. You put a bracket around the nitrite ion, and that's when you put your two down here. Again, as a subscript, and that means we need two of these whole ions. So one calcium matches with two nitrites, and that's what the formula looks like. Okay. Let's take a look at number four, and we have to name this one now. And naming is really easy, guys. It's super easy. You name the, you just name, usually you'll have a metal, and you just name that element, like just it's the element name, and then you name the polyatomic ion, you name it its special name. So it's really easy. Like this one, what's SR? Strontium. SR is strontium. Yes. And so you just name it strontium. And then what's SO3? Well, sulfur and oxide mixed. Yes, it's sulfur and it's oxygen. But what's the name of that ion? There's a special name. You kind of got to get familiar with these. Yeah. Look on the back of your periodic table. It's on the chart. And it is, yes, someone mentioned it, sulfite. Okay, you got it there? And it's literally as easy as that, guys. Okay, ternary... Um, polyatomic, you just name the ions. Now, I don't know if you have, let's look at 7 here now. I don't know if you guys have HCO3 on your chart. Do you have it on your on the back of your periodic table there? Does anyone see HCO3? Okay. Now, it, I wouldn't be too upset with you if you named this hydrogen carbonate ion because it is listed uh, in some literature is hydrogen carbonate ion. But the other name for it that I'd probably rather you, you use is bicarbonate. Okay, that's, that's a little bit more common name for that. So HCO3, you'll want to write this on your, yeah, on your chart there. You want to add it. And it is a what charge on the ion. Actually, if you look at this compound, you'll be able to figure out what charge HCO3 should have by looking at this formula. Anyone know what charge it should have and why? <coughs> There's two ways you could tell, actually. Let me just make this a bit bigger. 
HCO3. What's the charge? Anyone? Okay, 2 minus. Everyone agree? Anybody have any other suggestions? It's actually 1 minus. And I'll tell you why. In this compound, lithium bicarbonate, okay, notice this. It's a neutral compound, right? And what charge does lithium have always? Plus 1. So what charge does this ion as a whole have? Negative 1. You see that? Okay, that's one way of telling. Here's the other way of telling. Look at CO3 by itself. This is the carbonate ion. And what charge does it have? It has a negative 2 charge. So if you added a hydrogen onto this one, what's the charge on hydrogen? Plus 1. So if these were actually combined together, the overall charge on HCO3 should be 1 plus negative 2 would be negative 1. Okay? So there's a couple ways you could figure this stuff out. But feel free to write it on your chart there so you can refer back to that. But that's called, that's bicarbonate. So this one is simply lithium bicarbonate. Yeah. And again, I'm not going to be too sticky on capitals for the names. Don't worry about it. You can capitalize them. You can not. I don't really care. Okay. Um, what about number nine? That one looks tricky. That one looks tricky. What's what's B E? Yeah, beryllium. Now, be careful with beryllium. Beryllium kind of trips people up here. It's one R and two L's. It's one R and two L's. So it's not like berry, okay? It's ber ber beryllium. B E R Y L L I U M. Beryllium. What is C L O? What ion is that? Okay, C L O. I haven't heard it yet. Sorry. Hypochlorite, yes. It's hypochlorite. And what charge does this hypochlorite have? Negative one. Yes. So when you're naming this, it's easy. Writing the formula, you have to be careful with the charges. But naming easy. It's beryllium hypochlorite. That's all it is. Hypochlorite. Yeah, it's on the chart there. Look on the 1 minus column. It's about 6 down. CLO minus. Hypochlorite. Hypochlorite. Okay, the only other thing you got to remember, guys, is if you have, uh, uh, like this manganese too, you see that? If manganese kind of has two charges, so you have to make sure you remember to, to when you're writing the formula to put your Roman numerals in there. All right. Um, what else should I... Look up. Yeah, you're just going to have to look up like arsenate, sulfate, cyanate, right, and you know, all these ones here. What's OH? Does anyone know offhand what OH is? That's a pretty common one. Yes, hydroxide. Very good. It's hydroxide ion. And it, here it is right here. Okay? And it's a minus one charge. All right, so uh, I'm going to give you a few minutes just to have some more practice here. So work on this. You, you probably won't get it done because I need, need, do need to do another lesson on molecular compound naming, but that's your ternary ionic compound uh, little lesson there. So go ahead and you can finish that, finish that sheet. Here.